Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak, and today we're going to be talking about what could possibly be the strongest arrow combination in the world. All right. The reason we're talking about that is uh, because this kind of a setup would be really good for people that are hunting dangerous game. This actually, this whole company, Bishop Archery, the whole premise is they're designed for people that want to hunt dangerous games. So what would be the advantages to having an arrow like that? What makes it different? What makes it the best in the world? What is what what is that? It's a question I had myself as well too and it forced me to actually reach out to Sean over at Bishop Archery and say, "Hey, your products, they, you know, from what I hear, they're amazing. I want to know why and I want to know what they are and I want to talk to him some more." So he actually sent me this stuff. He sent me three arrow shafts two 600 grain broadheads and 600 grain field tip for me to check out and see so that I could explain to you guys what it is um, and the reason for it. Now, first of all, there's a lot of great arrows out there, a lot of great stuff like that. A lot of us are, are you know, we hunt all kinds of different things, but one thing a lot of us are not aware of that don't do um, dangerous game hunts is a lot of those hunts have to be followed up with gunshots and the reason for that a lot of times is they don't find out till afterwards when they actually you know shoot that animal with an arrow then they shoot it with a gun then it has to be you know then they do the autopsy on that and they find out that it was arrow failure that resulted in that animal not being found and uh, and so there's a there's a serious drive for a lot of big game hunters <clears throat> dangerous game hunters, I should say, that want to have that maximum arrow efficiency, that maximum uh, structural integrity, integrity, that arrow that is built to handle those hits on those kind of animals and do the damage as needed without fail. Because with that failure, you end up with a gunshot. You know, you, you if you're spending, uh, you know, 50, 60, 75, 100 thousand dollars on a hunting trip. To hunt something with your bow and it has to be killed with a rifle, uh, it probably doesn't sit well with you. So spending a little bit of money to get an arrow set up that will not fail, and will not break, and will not have issues, and will not bend, and will not chatter, and will not lose its edge, and will not give you any issues whatsoever is a major advantage. And, uh, and Bishop Archery was designed for that stuff. See, Sean is a perfectionist. Everything about him is uh, the highest possible grade it can be, period. Um, now, when you go to Bishop Archery's website, you're going to see that this stuff is not cheap. Okay, it's not cheap at all. Um, but the quality of this stuff is amazing. And we're going to get into that and break it down. But understand that his clientele, for the most part, is people that have been to Africa, had problems with their setups and they come to him uh, to get rid of those problems and get the solutions needed to handle that kind of a trip for the next time they go back. Some of his clients go to Africa four and five times a year hunting big game, dangerous game out there. Um, he's got a lot of celebrities to buy his stuff to use for these hunting trips out there, things like that. The names he was giving me would blow your mind. I can't, I'm not putting them out here for anybody to know about, but um, his stuff is well, well respected and, and very well well known in the dangerous game bow hunting community all right um so it, it's a very very big deal there on that kind of stuff so i wanted to see what these things were about and what made them this way and uh and now you know sean also he said he was telling me he's like a lot of my hunters too there are people that buy my stuff are, are deer hunters so you can uh, but he did say you don't need this stuff for deer for antelope for most of your your animals and things like that too but there are people out there that also just want to have the best of the best there's people that want to drive a ferrari there's people that when they want an off-road vehicle they got to buy a mercedes g-wagon uh, or a land rover defender and modify it because it is the best will it go to the same places that a, a regular rubicon will go or uh you know or anything like that yeah it, it, they're, they're gonna go the same places but they want that defender they that land rover they want that g-wagon uh setup that's a couple hundred grand all decked out you know there's people out there that want that stuff and it's likely also the same case with the stuff for with bishop here too there's people that are willing to spend that kind of money for the highest level and pure perfection that you get with this stuff uh to be able to use for their their everyday hunting um but his tailor and his his go-to is actually um towards the stuff that uh is for dangerous game and he doesn't uh he was telling me he says i, I don't make much money on this stuff he can't live on it this is just a a passion for him that he turned into a business this stuff is all hand done by him 
um, and it's amazing quality, everything about it, but it's not something he's, he says. You know, I, I, I can barely make a, you know, scratch ends, make ends meet with the Bishop Archery side of this, uh, he was saying, because of how intensive and labor intensive and uh, the cost of the materials and stuff he's using in this, which we'll get into. Believe me, they're different. Um, but what's involved with it, he says, I, I barely make any money on it at all. I can't quit my day job. I have to have my day job in order for me to uh, survive on this stuff barely takes care of it. Itself. So when you look at these prices, understand there's a lot that goes into this. Um, it, it may not be for you. It's not for me. I could never shoot this stuff. I could never afford to shoot this stuff. Um, and uh, so th these were given to me for free for me to review for you. Um, but I'm not. He's not setting me up. I'm not going to be shooting his stuff regularly. This is unbiased. Okay. This is just a couple of arrows that he gave me on my request so that I could do this video for him and so that I could show. Um, you know what these things are. I was curious what makes an arrow um, be something that could cost eight hundred dollars or more for for a dozen arrows. Um, you know what makes something that can make a head be this expensive. What what makes this this way and why is it that so many people love his stuff that hunt um, dangerous game. What what makes it the best arrow in the world. What makes it the strongest arrow setup in the world? Um, so I wanted it. He sent me this stuff. Let's take a look at what we got here. Before we get into these and get into this stuff, it's interesting to note that when he sent me this stuff, now this one here is just my notes, so I'm saving that there. Uh, but on these, on these three arrows came with all of this paperwork, okay? Look at how much paperwork is here that I have here, okay? This is paperwork on the heads, on each of the shafts, a note for me, um, you know, about some of the things on here and some of that stuff, then I had to call them and ask some more questions on here. But this is all paperwork that all came um, with these arrows and his heads and what they are and that kind of stuff. So it's very interesting stuff and it's way more than just a carbon shaft. I promise you that. And it's way more than just a just a machine and broadhead. I promise you that as well too. So I have my notes here from him. I'm going to leave them here in case I need them. Um, and uh, but so let's start with the broadhead and save the shaft till the end. Let's take a look at the broadhead. Now he gave me two 600 grain broadheads. And, um, and actually, I'm gonna, I need my grain scale that is out there because I'm going to weigh these shafts for you, and we will grab that. I'll pause that when it's time to grab it. But the broadheads are 600-grain broadheads right here. I'm going to bring it in. We're in my office here. This is a setup, a little not, not normal from where you normally see it. But because of the setting in here, with the lights I have in here already, I can get in close and, and not burn you out. So that's why we're in here. But there is... That broadhead, there's the broadheads, two broadheads, which, which way I gotta go for you? There you go, so you can see them. But that is the two broadheads, 600 grain. I'll keep them against my chest, that'll probably be easier because it's probably not gonna focus real well. But 200 or two 600 grain broadheads and a 600 grain field tip to practice with. So let's take one of these broadheads off so we can look at it closer here and see what we're talking about. Give you an example to put it into perspective. Let's look at that compared to a one of my Magnus heads. Okay, my Magnus uh, 150 head here. Okay, this thing, this broadhead is insane. Now on this broadhead, what you're getting here um, is machined. It's just it's amazing the quality of this stuff. I'll give you the specs in a minute. But uh, it's single bevel. You can also see you have a high ridge right on here too. Okay, it's kind of cool that it has that center ridge on here and here to help open those holes up and get it done. And it also offers structural integrity to this broadhead. This broadhead will not fail, okay? It's not gonna ever fail. There's just no doubt about it. Now, the, this broadhead is made out of S7 tool steel. When I was talking to Sean, I told him, I said, well, there's a lot of broadheads made out of S7 tool steel. And he said, yes, but S7 is made in many different places. A lot of it comes from China. There's even stuff out there that's not as good as even China made S7. Then there's USA S7. He said it's all part of the grain structure. He said, you know, because I asked him, I said, there's a, there's a, a channel out there, which you're going to see, um, that, I, that I'm going to mention to you. Um, and it's, uh, I'll grab it, I'll link it here. It's Luke, John Luke, is it? I believe it is. Um, yeah, or Lusk, John Lusk. 
um, Lusk Archery, and I will put a link on here, a description, so you can go to his YouTube channel. He tests all kinds of broadheads. Okay, it's what he does. He's fanatical about it. He's got an incredible channel, and I've been watching him for a long time. Well, he has tested a lot of bishop heads. He shoots bishop heads on a lot of his hunts and stuff, too, but he's tested these. And it's, I was telling Sean at Bishop Archery, I'm like, you know, I watch uh, Lusk Archery, and I watch your videos on those, and your, your heads... Are, are there's something about them? I mean, they hold up incredible. They don't even edge chatter. They don't get there's no deformation. There's no nothing when these things are shot into cinder blocks, shot through steel plates, or everything. They hold up incredible. And he said, There are so many different versions of S7 steel out there, and some are good and some are not good. He says, We only buy the absolute best quality S7 steel that you can get in the USA, and it's tremendously expensive. Like double and triple the cost, even quadruple the cost of what you get with S7 steels that are made from other places. He said, so there is a tremendous difference in that S7 steel quality. Plus, he said, we do a proprietary heat treat on ours, unlike anybody else, which takes it to a whole new level of, of everything you want in there. And he uses a 40 degree bevel on his head. And he says he does that again for strength. And for it to hold together, you start getting that angle too low, like a lot of us like, 25 degree bevels is kind of the standard. He says you're going to weaken that edge up because it's going to be too steep. With a 40 degree on there, you really gain that edge uh, rigidity and strength, which on a dangerous game shooting a Cape Buffalo or an elephant or a rhino or something like that, that is very important. And uh, you can still get them as sharp as you need. So he said it's a fantastic design, um, and it really does do wonders with the... the um, with the single bevel and the twist ratio through there and these high ridges in there help with the bone splitting capabilities. He said everything about my head is tested, tried, true, proven, and designed that way on purpose. And uh, so these heads are absolutely incredible here. Um, but Truth's S7 steel, this head, these blades on here are 164 thousandths of an inch thick. Okay, let that sink in for a minute. Like most of like my A Boyers, I think are, are 0.072. These are literally more than double the thickness of an A Boyer. I'm hoping you're going to see that edge. And I got the light where it would kind of reflect for you so you can. Um, but that edge right here, this thickness of that head right there, just the edges, not counting the whole head, but that edge is 164 thousandths of an inch. Let that sink in at the size of that thing. This thing is indestructible on every level. Why? Because it has to be when you're hunting that kind of stuff. Broadhead failure on dangerous game like that is very common. Having a broadhead that will never fail you is his goal. This head fits that bill 100%. Uh, again, if you go over to Lost Archery Channel, and again, I'm going to have that stuff linked down there below for you. He shows you these heads being used and shot into cinder blocks, shot into um, steel plates, shot into everything, and they, they don't, there's not, you, you don't even see a scratch on them. I mean, it's incredible what they can tolerate. So, something to think about. Also, worth noting in there that's interesting is that uh, Lusk Archery, John Lusk, every broadhead he tests, he's shooting through into steel, he's shooting them into uh, concrete, he's shooting them into all that stuff for two years. Two years that he has been doing that straight, he has used one Bishop Archery Indestructible, one of these arrow shafts we're talking about is what he has done that with for every one. So that means hundreds and hundreds of shots taken into cinder blocks by one shaft with tons of different broadheads, but one shaft hundreds of times out of a heavyweight compound bow drilled into concrete blocks and he's used one shaft for that whole entire process so that goes to show you the durability of these and that stuff which leads us to one more thing because you guys are going to ask am i going to test this am i going to shoot this well because of the weight and because of the stiffness of these i took them out in the yard when i came here and today when i got them and i shot them with that field tip on to see what they would do out of my my measly for this kind of stuff 57 pound longbow and uh, I'll be honest with you, his, his, one of these shafts, that the stiffest one, um, I couldn't get it to fly good at all. It just almost basically flew sideways. So that was not something I'm going to be able to test. Um, the middle one was still kicking pretty good. And uh, the last one flew pretty decent, but it's like, I, I can't remember, but I want to say it was almost 1,400 grains for the light one. And uh, there was just, it went so slow and dropped it. 
Point being, I, and you, you'll see some footage. I'll show it in here. I'll show me shooting that arrow at the end of this so that you at least can see me shoot these ha or these arrows and you can see why I'm not going to personally test them because it would be irrelevant for me to shoot these into cinder blocks, into steel, into anything myself with my setup. It would be 100% pointless. There's just, I cannot, with my 57 pound longbow and my short 26 inch draw, I cannot give these the workout they need to be tested. So that'll be in another video because I'm going to take these shafts and these broadheads and this stuff with me and I'm going to have other people that do shoot compounds and heavyweight compounds. I'm going to have them shoot them throughout these next few months and shoot these arrows and bring them to them and then uh, I'll videotape that stuff and we'll make another video showing that. But in the meantime, if you go over to that Lusk Archery, uh, you will see these shafts that we're going to talk about being used in every single one of his tests where he shoots into concrete and stuff like that into the steel. And you will also see him test these broadheads and he's doing it in a way that I don't have the stuff to do it with. So um, you're, that's going to be the best I can recommend for you to see this stuff actually in action. But we're going to talk about what it is, what has, what it's got going on, and uh, what some of these things are. But that's that broadhead for you. Now, I'm going to go pause this and grab my grain scale so I have it handy so we can give you the weights I need. Okay, we have the, the weights. I weighed all these for us here so we know what we're talking about and what we got going on. Now, we have three different shafts here. All right, three of them. Now, they're all basically the same. Uh, but they are different spines in here, which means we have a few different setups, okay? But this first one here that we're seeing here, this is a uh, zero spine shaft, okay? There, I mean, this, look at, watch this. Okay, look at that. I mean, I can't flex that at all. It's, it's a zero spine, 100% virgin uh, terrain carbon, which means it's never had any heat on it whatsoever. It's never had a heat press for a label, anything. There's zero weak spots in this. We'll get into the or the setup of it. Um, and it's got this collar on the front here, which you can see for where the, uh, um, that is where the insert's going to go on this one. Why is that not focusing on me? There we go. I'm hoping you're focusing. Can't tell. Here we go, I think. But uh, that's that has that steel collar on there, steel collar on the back as well too, and I will explain what those are and what those collars are for and what they're doing. Um, I think that's actually better against my shirt. Again, I tried to set this up right, but you can see that on there. Um, but that is that one right there. This is a zero spine shaft. So, I mean, there is zero flex to this at all. You might be thinking, well, who could shoot that? Well, guess what? If you're, uh, you know, again, if you're going after dangerous game, and you're going to be shooting an 85, 95, 100 pound compound. Um, something like this with a 600 grain head is very tunable. Okay, he's told me he's like this. This this shaft may seem zero, like it's impossible, but it's very tunable um, for these higher, high, heavier weight compounds. That's what this is made for. People that are shooting tremendously heavy bows for this particular one. Now, the thing about Bishop is that they will make any kind of arrow setup that you're looking for, okay? You can get these zero spine, you can get any spine you want, you can get interchangeable weight systems inside of these things, uh, different cores, you can change the FOC. He has a 100% custom arrows and tunable arrows on there. So it doesn't matter if you're shooting a 40 pound recurve or you're shooting a 125 pound compound, he has arrow setups that will work for you that are still offering you the stuff that we want or that we're ta he's talking about in here. So those are options. Just these are the three shafts that I have. This one right here being the most indestructible arrow ever made in history, period, hands down, without fail. And uh, they all are, but this one here being the big dog. Zero degree or zero spine, no flex, this is 35 and a half inches long. Now he will cut them to whatever length you need for this kind of stuff. You get some variables, but this particular one cannot be cut, the one I have. I cannot cut this down. We'll explain why in a minute. Um, and then the next shaft we had in that one that you see here, here's the weight of it. 1150 grains empty or without a head, okay, no head. Put the 600 grain broadhead on and your 1750 grain arrow um, and this thing is indestructible. With that head combo, when you have these together, this setup right here is by far the strongest, most structurally integrity, or has the most structural integrity. This is the strongest arrow setup in the world today 
that I'm aware of. Maybe there's something else. I'm not sure, but this is it. This is what this video is about. What is the strongest arrow in the world? Well, here it is in my hands right now, and we'll explain why, but that is it. I already told you about the head. Now, the other shaft we have here is a spined one here. This one is a little thinner diameter too as well. Um, so you're going down in thickness of carbon, okay, or thickness of the shaft. I don't know if you're going to notice that. Maybe you can better from a side view. Um, you can see the, the diameter changes on them here. Uh, so they're actually going to roll this way on the top is thickest. And you can see them as they drop down to uh, smallest on there. So there is a difference. This bottom one is about size of our normal carbon arrows that we shoot. But this next one, so that was the, you saw the big one, which the gold greatest of all time type arrow. Next one here, this one here is his mammoth model, and this one spine-wise would be equivalent. To, this is a 100 spine and can be used for anybody that normally shoots a 50 to 250 spined arrow based on heads and things like that. But this is a 100 spine um, on there, so very stiff as well too. You know, not as stiff as a zero, but very, very stiff setup in here. Again, we'll get into the details on that, but that's that one here. Still 35 and a half inches long, and I cannot cut this one down. Same thing, uses a knot collar on the front, or this one doesn't. This one actually doesn't have the collar on the front. It's got an insert, same kind of insert, but does not have a collar over the front. It does, however, have the collar over the back. You can see it on here. There is a light or a green anodized collar that is on there. I'm hoping you can see that. Maybe if I come in even closer... But that green, I thought this lighting would be better for this, but that green collar that's on there um, is a cap right there. You can see that cap goes right over the carbon and fits the knock in in there. Now this next one, the last one, this one is equivalent. This is a, um, a 300 spine, good for anybody shooting 150 to 600 spine based on head weight, things like that. And this one here is like my carbon arrows. And this is the one that I could actually get to fly good with a bear shaft. You'll see it at the end of this video. Um, and I can shoot this one. Same thing here though, he's using just an insert in here. Not just an insert, it's one of his proprietary inserts, but does not have the collar, so it has a footer system on it. Okay, so if you look at the heads of these, that goat one, this bigger one, that has the collar on here right here that you can see you see that collar that goes over this is like a footer okay this is an external footer over the top this one has an external footer is this whole black that you're seeing here this one has a double footer two footers over top of there on there with that standard insert too so you got both so you can see so those are your differences in the three shafts that i got they all have the knot collars on the back um and then uh so that that middle one that I showed you, 930 grains raw, and then with the broadhead, 1530 grains. The last one, the one that I can basically, you know, this one right here that I could shoot and I, I can work with, and like I said, if I were to flex this up and run it out of my bow with this 600 grain broadhead, um, I mean, this thing bear shafts for me pretty dang good. It flies pretty straight. It's a little knock low for me, bear shafting, but uh, but this thing flew very true for me out of my 57 pound longbow, my 26 inch draw length. I was very impressed, but you'll see it's funny looking because my arrows that I shoot are about that long compared to this thing. So it's a whole different world. I cannot cut this shaft down though. Again, we'll cover that. But, uh, but this one did fly very well. So if I were to flex this one up and turn around and hunt with this, with this setup, I could very successfully hunt with this and do incredible. And the penetration with this, with that field tip on there when I was shooting this, was unbelievable. I mean, you'll, you'll see it. I did a few shots with the, all of these to, like I said, see what I thought of them, and I did record it. Um, so you'll see, but this arrow here, re empty, raw, with just a shaft of 750 grain, so as I hold it in my hand with that 600 grain broadhead, it's a 1,350 grain arrow. Okay, that's double what I shoot. I shoot a 720 grain arrow, so this is double the weight of what I shoot. Very, very heavy um, for what I need, but imagine if you were shooting this arrow out of a 75 or 80 pound longbow um, or recurve or anything like that heading to Africa or going on a, on a moose hunt or an Asiatic water buffalo hunt, this is a setup. If I'm going to go to Africa or go hunt anything dangerous, this is what I'm bringing. Now I would have Sean at Bishop, I would have it be my 27 inch length. 
So it would be cut down. They would be built to my specs. All uh, Basically, this would all stay the same. We would just shorten that up and make it where it would fly like I need it to. And this would be kind of the aero setup that I think I would be going with. Um, would be something of this line right here. Good FOC, nice setup to it. Awesome aero. Now, um, I do like the double footer on here as well too. I mean, not just one footer two footers on there. I mean, this thing is indestructible on every level. So, and a knock collar. Now that knock collar on all of these, you notice here, we'll show it on the real big one because you can see it the best on there. So we're talking about these shafts. That knock collar that's on there that you're seeing right there, that metal, is a footer over the back of the carbon. Okay, that comes over and closes that up so that there's no way the back of the arrow can actually blow out under any circumstances. So that is a beautiful thing. It's knocked around the back, it's locked in, and he said it, it, it's another fail safe safety precaution that makes it where that can never damage or come apart. So that whole entire shaft, which is a concoction of very crazy stuff I'll tell you about is all locked in with that steel collar on the back of this. This is a, a, a actual stainless steel collar um, and then your knock, any knock you want will fit into it so that's good. On the other end same thing, a steel collar over the insert that locks that whole carbon together. You're seeing that whole thing again right there. Um, these ones like I said the footers are actually alloy aluminum footers and he also offers them in steel but double footer on this one single footer on this one so these shafts are never going to come apart i mean it's, it's pretty much impossible to to blow them out to to break them there because of that stuff now but the shafts alone you know i know a lot of you guys are thinking well well footers for everybody uses footers that's no big deal you're right, I get that. So let's look at what these shafts are made out of. What are these shafts? Because if I were to pull this out and let you see in there, which I cannot do, um, it's a whole different concoction. It's a mix. This is not a carbon arrow. Listen, actually. Okay, you can hear it. It doesn't even sound like carbon arrows. So what we have in this, on the outer ring, we have that knock collar that I was telling you about right there. Okay, so we have the knock collar holding this in together. This is the same for all these shafts that I have here. We have the footer, okay, which is that footer area down here that I just got done explaining to you. These are the footers, footers, footers. So we have footers on these things that are there holding those. And I'm going to take this broad head off this one just because, uh, like I said, I'm going to be swinging these around. Um, so you have the footers. Then you have, after the footer, you have a carbon layer. That's what you see, this black right here. That's the carbon layer that you're seeing just like you would on carbon arrows, but it's different carbon, all right? So I talked to him about this in length for an hour and a half today. I should have recorded it as a podcast. We're going to do a podcast soon. I should have recorded that conversation because uh, it was pretty interesting. Most of your aero manufacturers use a 24-ton carbon. Okay, that's the carbon, that's the, the quality of the carbon that's on here. He uses a carbon from Touré. It's a company and it's a, it's a style and it's uh, it, the carbon that he's using in these, it's a 50 ton carbon. Okay, so it's double the strength in the carbon and the carbon fiber than, than everybody else out there is using it at 24 ton. And he didn't tell me what his is. He won't tell me. He's like, I can't tell you because uh, it's proprietary to me, but it is over 50 tons um, of the strength of that carbon. Well, so you got that carbon layer, which is double, minimum, more than double the strength of a regular carbon. Then the next layer in is an alloy that goes full length. One of the reasons we cannot cut these shafts ourselves and get the knock insert to fit in there, you know, you can't just cut it down here and then slap this stuff on. It has to be cut to length by him um, there on this particular model. Others, you can, but these ones you cannot. Um, these have to be... Um, there you go. But uh, these are, so you have the carbon, well then you got an alloy that again is a proprietary alloy. He's not telling me what it is. But this shaft from one end to the other end inside of this carbon is a, a almost think of like an aluminum arrow that is fit all the way through this thing, all the way to the end, an alloy in there, and it is epoxy and infused to this outer one. Okay, so it's an arrow inside of an arrow. Okay, it doesn't stop there. So after that alloy set up there, inside of that you have another carbon, another 50 plus ton carbon arrow inside of the alloy. 
Okay, think about why it costs so much to make these. He's making these by hand. Imagine the glue time, the dry times, the everything involved in these entire processes for these things are insane. And not to mention the cost of the materials and everything that's involved with that. But you have an outer carbon, an inner alloy in there, and then another internal carbon inside of that that gives you that other carbon. Then your insert is a stainless steel 100, and, and you can change it, it's different options, but it's a uh, um, 115 grain, was it, I think he said on there? Let me look at my notes. Um, checking. Where did I see it, or where did I write it? Um, 110. This is a 110 grain machined, Ferrous stainless steel. Now this is very important here. Okay, this this insert that's in there is a, a ferrous stainless steel. I believe he said in what he he said that this is heat treated. Okay, this insert is actually heat treated as well too. He said now most stainless steels cannot be heat treated. They have to be there's ferrous and non-ferrous and there's qualities. This is a USA made stainless steel proprietary blend, he wouldn't tell me what, he's like, I'm not telling you what it is, but it is ferrous and it is heat treated. So that insert is heat treated. He said it's impossible to have a problem with it. Um, but a heat treated insert that's inside of there. Um, and uh, ferrous and heat treated, as you see in there. So that's the makeup of what's inside of this thing. We are talking an insane arrow here. Um, you're actually talking about basically shooting three arrows that are in here. This is actually three arrows in one plus all these components and like I said all the detail to them is absolutely incredible. So you can see why so many dangerous game hunters are calling him. He's making thousands of these arrows a year. He's selling thousands of broadheads a year. And like I said, he's even at the price it is, he's like, I'm barely breaking even. It's a hobby and a passion of mine, but I cannot make enough money to even, you know, to, to even get by on just with the Bishop Archery. It's like, I have a day job. My wife has a day job. We need those. We can't get by without those. This is a passion for building the highest quality, most capable, strongest arrows and broadhead combinations that ever existed. And uh, I'll tell you what, I've never touched anything like this before. Um, it feels like a... Uh, it, it feels like a fish arrow wrapped in carbon fiber, and it's just, I mean, as far as, it's just, I've never seen nothing like it. But the strength of this thing and the durability, just incredible. So that's what you get with the, um, you know, with Bishop Archery. You get the highest level of quality there is. The highest level on every level there is. Like I said, even with the broadheads, how he said, um, you know, I said to him, there's other, there's a lot of S7 steel broadheads. He said, yeah, but there's not a lot of S7 steel broadheads like mine. You'll see the difference. Watch some videos. See what these things go through. There is S7 steel. He said, just like there's 1095 steel. And he said, yeah, I, I listen to your podcast and watch your videos. And I know you like 1095 for your knives, but you've said many times, the only 1095 I care about or like is made by SE or Tops. Other than that, none of the other 1095s interest me because they're not done right. Okay, he said the same thing applies here. There's many S7 steels, but if they're not done right, and if they're not the foundation of a USA, true USA um, S7 steel coming out of there, you can't do what he does. He said it's not those other S7 heads are bad, but he's like to get to this level, you have to spend the money and do it the right way and all this kind of stuff. He said not that it, it's mandatory for deer and for things like that. You don't need it. But if you're going to hunt the game animals that my clients hunt and you need that 100% fail safe, this is how I do it. And these videos prove it. Again, if you go to John Lusk over there, Lusk Archery, um, and again, I'll have that link down there for you. Uh, but you can see these shafts in action, which I got the rest of them here, but you can see these shafts in action, and you can see these broadheads being used in his videos, the shafts being used constantly. And uh, you can see his... Uh, um, his the uh, broadheads that 600 grain of bishop broadheads being tested in that video as well too and a bunch of videos he's done and even his hunting videos that you see on there he's using bishop broadheads on a lot of them too so that's what we get that's what it is that's what bishop archery is and they make all kinds of things he's like i got a lot of whitetail hunters that got to have the best of the stuff out there they've been bugging me for 100 grain broadheads so i built 100 grain broadheads are they the strongest 100 grain broadheads in the world yes they are are they stronger than some of my other heads no you just don't have enough 
steel to work with in 100 grains to do that. But he's like, I, I have a wide range on my website for all kinds of hunters to use whatever they're hunting and whatever their bow setup is. I can accommodate that. My stuff is not cheap, but it's the best there is, period, in every single category. And from what I see and have my hands on right here, I believe it is. And uh, you judge for yourself. Um, I know there's going to be some people, I'd never pay that much for an arrow. Well, me neither. Okay, I wouldn't either. I, I, I don't hunt with, with my deer and my, my hogs and my black bear. I, I, I don't have the money or the budget to buy this kind of stuff and set up like that. But if I was doing an Asiatic water buffalo hunt or I was going for Cape Buffalo or I was going to do a fifty seventy five thousand dollars hunt like this and go after those kind of animals, you can bet that I would do this. It, for me, it would be this one right here, this type of a setup that I would be running and I would have it built for me and I would have, even if I only got three, if I was going on a Cape Buffalo hunt or if I was going on a moose hunt even, even a you know, moose hunt, something like that, I would have three of these as my go-to and then I would build other arrows um, that, you know, my, my normal arrows that would match the same kind of uh, spine so it would be the same flight characteristics. I'd make a match the weight to everything so it was similar, but I would have these three of these, which is not very expensive in the grand scheme of things to have three. But I would have three of these set up as my one, two, and three arrows. My go-to first three shot arrows would be something like this because of the absolute uh, reduction of failure option in my arrows. This arrow shaft will not fail. These broadheads, they will not fail under any circumstances on any kind of an animal. Like I said, you can see it in the testing on some of the websites that are out there. Even Bishop Archie's got some of the videos on there. These are, for all practical purposes, the strongest arrows ever made. So that's what the video was on. And uh, like I said, you're going to see right here me shooting them a little bit. Um, watch the penetration of this one, which is pretty impressive. I, I mean, this is going pretty slow out of my bow. I mean, it's going pretty slow. I, I doubt it breaks 100 feet per second. Probably like 65, 70, 80 feet per second, I would guess. Um, I almost had to hold double height. Um, you know, like if I'm shooting here with my longbow here, you know, if that's my angle I got to go to for this shot here, I'm like this just to get this one to lob into there. Yet still, this one blew all the way through my target at 35 and a half inches. And I haven't had one of my, uh, one of my normal 720 grain arrows go through this, that target yet. Now it's getting pretty shot up. It's getting pretty beat up. It's getting there. But I've not yet this season had one of my arrows blow through that target. I've had them sink in that far, you know, to the fletching. I've had a couple of that. This one blew right through and went 15 yards beyond that target. And a bear shaft with a, with a field tip that is massive in size. Keep in mind, my field tips are the same size as this shaft. Look at the extra diameter of that and how blunt that head is. And yet this pushed through a foam target and blew out the other side and went 15 more yards. So, um, so it's an interesting video for you to see. Definitely worth watching. And uh, stay tuned. Like I said, won't, it won't be soon, but in a while I will have a video up of some other guys shooting these arrows. Uh, some guys that can put these arrows to a test that I cannot do with my bow. Um, so I have some friends I will have, hopefully in Missouri this year, I'll have Steve who I'm going to have him bring that 104 pound longbow and I'm going to have him shoot these things with the broadhead, uh, with the field tip and uh, we're going to beat them up and see what we can do. I have other buddies that are shooting heavyweight compounds and I'll bring some AR500 targets down there and have them shoot those and there'll be a whole other video that I'll do on these but my intentions were to do that with these myself. Shoot them into rocks, shoot them into AR500, shoot them into everything and use them. Well once I got them, realized the weight of these and how slow they're coming out of my bow it would be a waste of time. I, I can't, I can't, I would prove nothing to you. It's almost comical. Um, even though you do get the penetration, and it, like you'll see, but it's it's almost comical how slow they're going for me. So we're going to have them shot by somebody's bows that, uh, that are putting out a lot more energy so we can test them in a, in, a, in a real environment. So that'll be coming up pretty soon. In the meantime, go check out Bishop Archery. Go over there. He's got a great site. Go browse around a little bit and uh, daydream and check things out. And if you're ever planning on doing a, a dangerous game hunt like that, something that you need these heroes to hold up to, and it's not just, <clears throat> for example, 
the dangerous game stuff. I'll give you another example that when I told him about it, he was like, absolutely. But imagine sheep hunting or, you, you know, you pull a, a ram hunt, something like that, bighorn sheep or uh, even mountain goat, something like that. And you're up there in all that shale and rock. And uh, you're on a, on a uh, you know, 14-day hunt up there and you're only going to carry with you, say, four or six or eight arrows. Making those arrows out of something like this with broadheads of this quality. Now, maybe you're not going to want to go with this kind of a weight. But having a bishop broadhead on a bishop setup shaft means that if you draw, you get that shot and you shank it and miss that shot and you end up sticking it in the rocks, you're going to walk over and pick that arrow up like that and you might have to just retouch it a little bit with your sharpening rod or your file, but it is 100% good and ready to go. So you're not having to carry a ton more arrows due to the fact that you might break or lose some. Okay, you have those arrows here built up good enough. You take one of these and put a judo or something on there, or uh, take a, a blunt similar to uh, right here. Imagine taking this field tip, or this uh, you know 600 grain field tip, you were to flatten, grind that off right there, that nub off, and make that a straight flat blunt. This would be an incredible um, you know, grouse arrow or, or anything like that, squirrel arrow, anything you're going to find. But you can bring this stuff with you on these. And if you shoot this and you miss that animal, that small game animal, you are not going to hurt this arrow. So on a trip like that where you're limited on the amount of arrows you can bring, this may be something you're interested in too. Even though you definitely don't need that uh, toughest arrow in the world to get through that animal and to kill that animal... It may be worth it so that you can make sure that while you're up there, all your arrows are not going to fail you or break or come apart. So anyway, thanks for watching and definitely check out Bishop Archery. There'll be a link down below. Also a link down below to the hunting product of the week. If you watch my videos, you know I've been doing that weekly. Uh, it's right down there next to the title. Click the little down arrow and it will bring you right to that. And uh, stick around. Don't leave yet because you're going to see that video of me shooting these here for you too as well. So thanks for watching. We have the... This here is that zero spine. This is a non-flexing. Look, you cannot flex it. It is zero spine shaft. And it is ridiculously heavy. I'll weigh it here in a little bit. But I don't think this is going to fly at all out of my bow. 57 pound long bow. But I mean, even look at the length of that arrow compared to my arrows. Um, I do not expect to be able to shoot this well enough to be able to test it is what I'm concerned with. Can I shoot this where I could use it to uh, shoot it into cinder blocks, into AR-500 targets? I, I, I don't think I can even shoot this thing well enough to make a difference in that testing. So let's see. I'm going to try shooting that deer with it. Let's see what happens. Now it is a bear shaft, but like I said, it's going to be super stiff. Let's just see what happens here. That's what I thought. See, I mean, I think it's just, just not going to fly right. Hang on, let me get it. Now let's try that lighter one. He gave me three different spine sizes. Let me try this lighter one. But this is the big dog here. This is that incredibly tough one. But let's check this one, which is a little more um, with a 600 point on it, but a little, little more spine. This is like a three. 350 or, or 300 150 to 300 spine but anyway point being this one might fly a little bit better but again same full length size huge 600 grain head again i don't think i can make this have enough energy out of the bow out of my bow to actually test it like we want but let's see how this flies didn't fly too super bad actually that didn't go too super bad And even there, look at the amount of penetration that we got in that dude through a target. Let's shoot this one once more. Um, this may be the one if I do any testing myself with, uh, because this one at least I'm, I can shoot it in it straight, which is important. But let's try it again. I got to aim a lot higher, even right here at, at you know 13 or 14 yards. But let's try it again here and see what this does. Okay. Blew right through the target. I mean, you went right through the target. It's over here. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> I mean, blew right through the target. Let's try it again. Well, we're getting some pretty major 
um, penetration out of this thing. Like I said, this is probably the one I will actually test because it's flying pretty good. It's going very slow because I think we're probably about 1,500 grains of total arrow weight on this thing, 35 inches long. But let's try it once more. But that blew all the way through that target. Went in, out, and out the other side and gone. Let's try it once more here. Okay. Yeah, that thing is insane. That is insane. Let me pull that. Let's see a penetration on that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Watch this. Ready? That far into that target. 